Yeah. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. So you've done so much horror, like supernatural horror. What was it about this project that made you say, yes, I want to do another one? Psychological horror is cool. It's a, it's a good version of horror because you don't know whether it's true or not. Audience doesn't know. The characters don't know. I play the chief of police. Even he doesn't know after a while whether this is real or not. So um, it's a type of horror that stays with you. You know, like uh, I thought it was really interesting. The Sixth Sense is a movie that a horror movie that works extremely well with no blood in the whole movie. Uh, because of how it messes with your mind. So I, I think that has an appeal. It's certainly an appeal to me. It's not just a guy uh, with a hockey mask and a machete. And you seem like the, I say seem because I've watched the first episode just to get an idea of it. You seem like the only normal character in the whole series. Was that important for you going into this after, I mean, so much evil dead? Uh, well, I, I'm not sure uh, how I fit in the whole thing. I'll, I'll leave that to the pundits. But, um, you know, what attracted to me was the group that they put together and how they're handling it. I think the 80s is, was a weird decade. I came from Michigan, born and raised in Michigan. My parents had a small town in the middle part of Michigan. Or they had a little uh, piece of property in a small town. It's a very familiar world with me. And uh, yes, he's the only rational character in there. And so that was that was appealing, that he was not an idiot. He's not a doofus. He's not a one-note Johnny. He actually talks to the teenagers like they're adults, which is good. Uh, I think that makes for an endearing character. I definitely felt that we could connect to him on a, yeah. a human level. And that helped, that helped me. <laughs> But then, of course, when he can't figure it out, that's not good. Yeah. So how do you personally keep things fresh within the horror genre, seeing as you are so well known for it? Uh, every part is different. So I've never played a chief of police before. You know, small town Michigan, the 80s was an in interesting time period. The cars were strange and boxy and ugly and... um. I think just mixing it up like that, because horror, there's a lot of aspects to horror. There, There's the psychological, there's the torture porn, which I'm glad we're sort of phasing out uh, from that. Um, you know, there and the, there's just a guy who's escaped from a, an insane asylum type horror, six o'clock news type horror. So I think it's mixing it up. I also look for someone I can root for. And I'll just say that as an actor, uh, sometimes when I see a film, I'm like, who am I rooting for? You know, who's the hero? That's why I enjoyed playing Ash for so many years on Evil Dead, because he's the hero. He's the good guy. He's an idiot, but he's the good guy. And there aren't many good guys in the horror genre. And so same with Chief Dandridge. He's a good guy. And yeah, he's he's a family man. He's a husband. He's a father. Yeah. With yeah, what was that like for you, you know, bringing all of these elements together and not having that stereotypical 80s man of the house? Uh, it's called good writing. <laughs> and that's what gets my attention, because normally that's what you'd be reading. You'd be reading stereotypical stuff. And so uh, these writers, Matthew Kane and his group, have gone to the next level in creating a show that's fun but intelligent. And, you know, that puts you way ahead of the game. Uh, ahead of most shows most shows are not that well written so just as my last question how would you describe uh chief dandridge in just three words that's four uh <laughs> the right the three. right guy the right guy he's the right guy well thank you so much for your time i really appreciate okay. it thank you